Okay, now we're ready to talk about knife fighting and a lot of the myths and fallacies and the misconceptions and basically what everyone else is doing more or less wrong. Uh, knife fighting, what you see a lot of people doing is uh, acting as if this were a sword and they're going to be doing lunging in and things like that or maybe slashing like as if it were a saber or the other big school treats it as if it were a stick and they're going to run their patterns whichever ones they use their numbering system and uh, treat it as if it were a stick but I've got news for those people this is not a stick it's not a sword you don't have the blade length to have a good safety margin like you do with a sword as far as doing uh, a lot of risky maneuvers and another thing you're going to see is people fighting this way this isn't if the guy doesn't have a knife, you can fight any way you want to, basically kill him. But if the other guy has a knife and he knows what he's doing, and let me tell you right now, about 2% of the entire world's population really knows how to knife fight. Other people just learn what other people have taught them, and that means nothing. You'll see this method right here. You might see them doing a little slashing and stuff like that, or you'll see what most people who think they know what they're doing will fight like this with a knife. They do all the slashing. Well, this limits their motion number one okay and number two they're only effective if you get into the slashing zone this is just like the bat you don't go into a guy who slashes you don't go into the guy who slashes back and forth like this either what you do is if he wants to stab you if he wants to kill you he's got to come to you now we're gonna back up uh, one of the things I want to demonstrate right off uh, right away is the fact that we're not using these are not props these are very sharp knives this knife by itself has a serrated edge that's this is a good knife fighting knife and uh, you can see I don't know if that's showing how sharp it is but it's not this is we're not playing around here this size is what you don't see mainly in the street what you're gonna see is another knife size whether it be a folding knife or someone pulls something out of their uh, boot it's about this length of a blade about like this so this is mainly what we're going to what we're going to train with right now because you're not going to see guys with the long fighting boys in the street. It's not like Crocodile Dundee and all of a sudden they say, "Well, that's a knife." You know, they don't do that. You're, what you're going to see is something like this, basically this length. I'm saying, not exactly the same knife. Now, how do we train to knife fight? Well, here we go. What we're going to do, uh, one of the things I want to tell you right away is, we do not knife fight this way. We do not knife fight this way. We fight with the blade this way and you're gonna see here in a little bit but before we cover how we knife fight you're gonna see how we defend against knife this is a, our training knife because if I were to have this knife once again I need to back up this is a really sharp one here what's gonna happen uh, the, one of the reasons why we're gonna have it like this I'll show you very we do this very slowly he's gonna come one of the biggest things you're actually gonna see someone try to do in the street against you is he's going to do what we call the gizzard stab. He's going to try to, he's going to, try to lunge at you somehow to, to stick this knife. I'm not going to move so it won't kill me. He's going to do one of these moves. Well, what we're going to do against that, we fight like this. Okay, very slowly. I'm hitting the angle, right? Depending on where I'm at. Basically, we're going to go up here on the arm because that's going to clear him out. But let's switch around so they can see this. What I'm doing is he's coming at me and I'm hitting the angle just like everything else. I'm going to take the knife right here. This is so sharp I can't even lightly touch him. I'm going to do this. This serrated edge is going to just wreck his world. I'll flip the blade around. Remember, we're using the actual edge. I'm not, for demonstration purposes, the back. So I do this to pull it, to push it away. Okay. Now I'm going to take this hand and check his arm. Now, when I, when I pull out, I pull out with the knife, that's going to just rip and cut, especially with a blade like this. This thing is sharp. And I do this, boom, okay. The blade will be this way in reality when we knife fight. It'll be right here. It'll be somewhere in here or here. That's it. He's dead. That is the end of the knife fight. Knife fighting isn't these long-winded, drawn-out things. Because if he's coming at me, come at me. <laughs> it's going to be that. This is a real knife. Who's training with real knives? We are. Go ahead, fast. You know, that's it against that. Okay, we're going to teach you against what happens against the very common uh, real attacks. Now that's it. We'll slow down. Okay, now let's get a little angle here. 
so they can see. Okay, he comes. You always go to the outside of the knife hand as much as you can. Like what we said with everything, just about outside, outside, outside. He comes. You practice very slowly. You do not practice with a real knife to begin with. You practice with something else, a wooden dowel. You practice without the knife. Pretend that he's got the knife. He's got the knife. Okay? Because look, this is the real knife right here that's cutting him. And I'm slamming down here. And I'm pulling back out. He's cut. This arm, you don't need to do any disarms. That's disarmed him. On this knife, we go here. Basically, you end up stabbing the guy in the back, usually. In the, in the kidneys or back here because you're going to be moving we'll do it slow but we'll move like we're going to move you're really going to get me he's going to come here see that commitment boom that's it that is how the guys are really knife fight in the world that's why you don't see them because they kill the guys who don't anyway what happens here once again we're going to cover this very slowly he comes right and I'm taking that step that angle again and I'm cutting here boom your perception and uh, everything else you're doing has to be very good. This goes back to the parrying. This goes back to all the other drills we've done before. You've got to have this to be good at it. Okay, so now we're going to do, we're going to cover the three major angles of attack, really, basically. That is very common. What he just did, okay, gizzard, as we're calling it, so it's a memory technique, gizzard, stomach. And you're going to see this angle, too. This backhanded angle, either from, see how he's got the knife? Either you're going to see it from that, or the guy's slashing with it like this. Okay, you use a modified wedge against this one. What happens, okay, he's coming. I'm sticking my hand up here on the shoulder. Really, is the best place to do it. And I'm taking the knife blade, and I'd be going right here with it. Okay? Because if he's doing it fast, we'll do that in a minute. I'm going over here, he's dead. Because, okay, go ahead, fast. Here, anywhere. That's it. You have to angle quickly. You get, well, a knife against knife, you got a couple chances if you're good. But this is it. End of fight. Number one, you've really cut the guy, he's going to drop the blade here. He's dead before he can switch hands with his knife anyway to do anything. Okay, that's number one. We did this one to the gizzard. N number two is this way, or if he switches the blade around and wants to do reverse, we do a modified wedge and do it. In here. Okay, number three is this, is this one. The really moronic idiots who come at you think they're going to land this one. I don't know what this is about. But if he comes at me, I do this. There. What I want to do, very, let's turn so they can see it this way a little better. If he's coming very slowly at me right now, I want to basically just drive him. It's another kind of a wedge, but not quite, because the blade will be right here. And I basically, I want to make his arm go off to the side there, because if he's coming at me, bam, right there, this one will end up in the neck a lot. And that's it. He's dead before he's hit the ground. But, okay, back up a little bit. Okay, he's going to do that one for real. Go ahead. That's it. That's what you do. And then, when you get a little bit better, we're going we're gonna to go back up because uh, this knife fighting is not easy. It's not simple. It's entirely complex. Your skills have to be good. So if he practices, you're going to practice it over and over about this speed. Give me all the different things you can, all the different major three angles, okay? Okay. You're going to do this over and over and over again. This, just to keep it going. Let's just keep it going so they can see. Okay, see I'm always going to the outside. Why is that? If I go on the inside, I run the risk of getting it paled. I've got to be some sort of idiot to do that. Boom, boom. Some guys fight with two knives. Those guys, if you, if you ever see someone, I'll just give you a clue. This is, we're not going to even cover this. But if you ever see anybody in the street face you like this and this, run. These are the most dangerous knife fighters in the world. Because what they're going to do, if he had a knife, I'll flip it around. He's going to do this. You're dead on your first move. There is no anything except dying against someone with two knives who knows how to fight. But we're not going to cover any of that. We're just going to go back up to how you're going to do a train against it. So you can train, you can train with one guy without a knife or just two rubber knives or whatever you can have. It uh, doesn't matter. So you're just going to do this over and over again until you can just do this simply and easily. 
Because those are the three ones that I found that you're going to find in the street. Another thing you're going to find as we go into unarmed, uh, when you're going to do unarmed defenses against a guy with a knife, are the prison type fighters. And what do they do? Okay, here's what they do. He's got this. He's using this hand. Why? Because he wants to grab onto me or push my hand against my body. He's killed me. If he can do this, he has killed me. Because he will just keep ramming the knife in and out of me. Okay, so this is a good place to start how we would handle unarmed against a knife. Against a knife. Now, I'm not saying this stuff isn't risky. I'm not saying, hey, you learn my techniques, you're going to survive every time. But these are the only ways to live against someone with a knife. We're going to demonstrate, for example, the stupidity of what everyone else teaches as knife defenses. Okay. Now, one of the things you see, okay, the gizzard tag, correct? Okay, do the, the, the X block that most people teach. Okay, he does the X block, right? You want a knife fighter? You know what a knife fighter is going to do against you? Okay, do the X. He's done that. Several things. Number one, he's going to do this. He's going to flip the blade. He's going to twist his hand or flip the blade over. He's going to pull out like that, and he's going to come in. You are dead. Whoever thought of that is an idiot. I'm telling you right now that you will not survive. Plus, by trying to stand right in front of me, you run the risk of missing. I fake, and you get stabbed. Okay, so if you see that the X block is weak against that. Something else, if he tries to parry me with the Wing Chun or the JKD normal parries to try to stop my, stop my hand, and I'll do the normal ones like that, he has a chance of me doing flipping the blade over because what happens is a real knife fighter will do this. I'll use the training knife. Okay, I'm doing whatever, just pair, just pock. They'll, they'll be doing this. They'll be taking the knife all around on you. So no, if, if he parries, if he tries to parry me up here, they'll just cut around and keep going. That's why you've got to angle. You have to hit the circle for real. If he sees me with a knife, first thing he does is hit the circle. And he goes to the outside of the knife every single time he goes to the outside of the knife. The only difference is now we're moving the unarmed against the knife. If you see the prison type guy against you, okay, I go to this way to make him come at me, right? Then I move this way, and I'm going to move that. But I'm waiting for him to come to me. Okay, he's got to come. He's got to come to me. And from here, I've got to take his leg out quickly because he, I can't let him switch the knife around. If I didn't get his leg, then I'm going to try to get away. You don't get a lot of chances to do this because if he's coming, I mean, do the prison style. <laughs> see that? I'm going to. I got to get his. I got to take his leg out, balance some way, this way, whatever. Because he'll be trying to switch the knife for real to another hand or come back around on me. And I've got to do whatever it takes. You've got to learn how to... You can't get into a lot of grappling against the knife. Okay, now we're going to back up the gizzard strike. Okay, we'll do very slowly here. If you're unarmed, this is the only way. Okay, go ahead. You do this because you want to connect with the back against their elbow. Why? Okay. Number one, because it sweeps his arm away from you, takes the knife away from you, and it's much safer to, if you have much more safety margin by contacting with the elbow than ever trying. Because if I do this, if I connect here and he's a good knife fire, see he flips over. Or he'll, he'll just, no, he'll go the other way and just pull, yeah. He'll just pull out easily. We, I mean, I want to show that some more about how the stupidity of trying to, or me trying to do this, like I was talking about, he'll just do that or he'll just come out that way, basically, and just cut me. But by my, okay, gizzard, by my going here, he can't pull out on me. He can't possibly do anything. Now, I have to be very quick at this point, and we're going to cover that in a second, but let's go back. Okay, so go ahead, full speed. <laughs> He's going to do that. Okay, the only things I can do, these are it right here. He's down in this position. Depending on how far he penetrated, I'm going to step on his foot, pin it like we did before, crack into his knee, and here is the big move, though. I've done this. This hand has got to come back up, hit him to drive his arm down, and this arm, we'll switch around here in a second, comes up right there. Now, I want to show you, I want to take a little bit of time to show you, grab the pad, how powerful that really is. 
Okay. So I've knocked him. You've got to think back. I've come up. He's tried to do this. No, stay there. He's tried to get me in the gizzard. And I've done this. And I've pinned his foot now. And I've switched hands here. You ready? And then I'm going to... That is going to take his whole neck off. That's what you want. You've got to kill this guy. There is no point around at this point. Because if he's calm, it's boom, boom, boom. You've got to do it like that. You've got to practice that. You, need, you can do that in a heavy bag, too. It's the whole swing into it. Because without... You've got so much target area with your arm like that, that his arm's out here. You're... That's going to be it. I mean, not only will it crush the esophagus if you hit as hard as I was, it'll break his neck. But that's all you got. The guy's trying to stab you with a knife. Okay, there is no cut to degree, injured to degree. This guy came at you with a knife. He has to be eliminated. If you don't eliminate him, he is going to kill you. You've got to kill him. You don't see the police saying, well, I shoot to degree. If the guy pulls a gun on you, he, you have to shoot him. That's the only way you know you're going to survive. Defense will take care of itself if you eliminate your opponent. They've said throughout, like I'm going back to the famous swordsman, if you do not destroy your enemy, you don't belong to be in front of him, which means he will kill you. You have to go through him. So if he was to come at me, bam, bam, this is it. That is it. That's what we're going to use against that move. Now, if you do, if he comes from this other angle, just go to the slash right now. If he's going this way, you're going to use the modified wedge. Actually, probably this is the easiest one to do unarmed against somebody really because he's coming in you're gonna go for the shoulder the elbow on the shoulder and that just jerks him and it sets him up perfectly for this for that knee break right here and this keeps in control of the knife hand until he has to switch hands to do anything to you and by that time you can also be on his head but if we're really doing that if we're doing that fast and if the guy swing just slash back and forth okay well do it tighter but don't come at me don't go into the guy. Do not go into the guy who slashes. Never, ever. If he wants to hurt you, he's going to come forward. Come forward. There's the wedge. See how I'm already on him? Pinning. But the, con the point that I'm not covering right now, this very second, is I would be hitting a circle. And I'd be going over here. That's going to pull his slashing off. He won't be able to slash very well. Once I go this way, it's difficult. And, okay, what he's going to do, he's going to come at me more. Don't come about medium speed as you're slashing as I hit the angle. See how he's got a reposition? Then I've got him. Bam! Bam! It's got to be just like that. Okay. Those are the first two. Okay. The first one, to reiterate, the gizzard, you go here, boom, boom, bam. He comes in from the other side, shoulder, elbow. You're going to get the pin, the break, the bend of the neck. Okay. The other one is this one. Okay, now most people show you a defense against this because it's very simple. However, I will show you something that changes. Okay, if he's got a longer blade and you're doing that, same thing, okay? Okay, he's coming down. Okay, these guys that want to come in here like this and do something like this, uh, if he had to knife the other way, he's got a lot of chance to flip over and cut me. Plus, I've got a lot of chance. That's stupidity. If I miss, see that, you, you see how close that is to me. If I miss, I'm dead. You don't want to go inside on a knife. You want to go on the outside. So if he's doing, if we're using this really, you, you're going to go over here. Do, do that or do the wedge, depending on where he's at. Depending on where you get him. If he's close to you, you start, okay, you're going to go that way. But if he's further away from you, you can wedge. Because you know? I'm going to hit in the circle alone. Okay, just do the cycle thing. He's kind of, see how the circle pulls him off? Going to the outside of the circle pulls him off. So come at me whenever, you know. See? That alone pulls him off. He's got to commit before you can do anything. You never, ever, 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 i got to say this a million times. If the guy, you see the guy in here doing all this stuff, he, doing all of his whatever knife fighting he knows, don't go into that guy, ever. If he's doing this stuff, don't go into him. Even if he's just going like this. If he's not moving, don't go into him. You hit the circle, he wants to get to you. I want to get to him. I don't do anything. I'm just trying to get to you. Just hit the circle, I mean, but don't do anything. If I want to get to him, I've got to commit. My committing is what he intercepts. And that's what Bruce was talking about, interception, interception of the technique. This is what you're going to see this size most of the time. The longer blades get a little more dangerous, but this becomes whatever. This becomes child's play. You know, a real knife is nothing. It's just another day at the office for us. 
this sort of thing like that. Now other people won't even train with real knives, let alone talk and joke around with them. It doesn't matter, you know. It doesn't matter how fast he goes, because if I hit the angle, that screws him right there. This is the only possible way in the world you can actually beat someone who's got a knife. All those other defenses against knives are stupid. I'd like to see someone really try one of those against one of us. It's not going to work. So I'm making big claims here because the people that I know have actually knife fought. The people who taught me actually knife fought. I don't know very many people who have. And one of the things you have to have with knife fighting, this has got to be in your mind. Now we've got to talk about the psychology of fighting, combat psychology. One of the things you've got to have is a purpose. I've said that over and over and over. But you've got to know in your head what you're going to do before you get there. Because the guy in a bar scene, a street fight, or a knife fight, or with a baseball bat is talking to himself, telling, you, telling himself, hey, I'm going to kick his ass, I'm going to kill him. He's building himself up in his own mind. And he'll try to surprise you. And the only way you can come on with a combat psychology is if you're already geared up for that. Now, we're going to go to the bar scenes and we're going to do some combat psychology techniques that are, no one else is showing you. And when we do that, you're going to see it apply to the bar scenes. Okay, another thing that we're going to see in the bar, of course, is the beer bottle being swung at you. Treat it just like it were a knife, whether they break it in half and come at you with the jagged edges like you see in the movies, or if they just swing in the whole full bottle at you, treat it like it were a knife. Now you're going to see the defenses against the swung beer bottle. Hey, we've looked at everyone coming at you with their right hand. Let's look at somebody coming at you with their left hand swinging the beer bottle. Hey, look, look, my hey, f***. Hey, hey. <laughs> Let's look at that very slowly. I looked at the left hand attack with the beer bottle. Treat it just like it were a knife. I came in at this angle. One of the angles we covered in knife fighting, that we're covering in knife fighting, he does the wedge on me. Of course, the wedge drives me off balance, and he's following up again with elbows, elbows, elbows. And that's all it takes. Once again, one, two moves into the fight. You're safe against the beer bottle. What could be easier? One thing that I'd like to explain that maybe we didn't really clearly get to is the fact that if you are facing someone who's doing the slashing with the knife this way, uh, if I had the other knife, you're going to see a difference here that when you're going to, especially unarmed, if you're going to go against the guy who's slashing at you, of course you don't go to him if he's slashing. I mean, if he comes at you like this trying to slash, the knife this long is not as dangerous as the knife this long. Uh, why? Because it covers more zone, and when he's slashing, it goes out further. Okay, now, uh, if he's got the long knife like that, and he's, and he's slashing back and forth like that, okay, slowly he stops. I can't go for the elbow, which they can see over here. 
I can't go for the elbow because look, see where the blade might come out? Switch it to the way it would be, the way they're doing it. See that? I could get cut. So what I've got to do against a long blade, we're still doing the wedge. We're still treating this as if it were the same as this angle coming down like this or that slashing angle like this. It's the same, it's still the same motion. But I am not going to go into the guy who's slashing. I'm going to wait till he comes to me. And if he comes to me, I'm hitting the angle big time. Really big. I don't know what's going to look the best here. But if he's slashing, if I'm right here and he's slashing, very slowly we do this, I have to get over here. I'm hitting in the shoulder again. Basically the shoulder. Because it's too dangerous. It is too dangerous to come to the, to the elbow with the knife blade that long. Now if he's got a short blade, and he's slashing back and forth. I don't go to him, right? He's got to come to me. And he, I hit the circle, and I go over here. And I went to the shoulder and here. And then we go back to everything else. All I'm trying to tell you right now is against these guys who want to slash, you wait, make them come to you. And go to the circle. That throws him off. Going to the, outs going to the outside always throws him off. He's got to commit. And I went right here. Right here. And the longer the blade is, the more readily apparent this is going to be. You have to do this. Okay, now that's the, one of the things I wanted to make sure. So if you say, someone says to you, well, what about these guys? Now you know. Once again, I want to drill it into you to watch this video three to four times before you begin, even the simplest pad drills. Also keep in mind the key central points to combat JKD are the hit angle and off bounce, the pop up, the wedge, the low line destructions, and also getting to the neck. Those are the things that are going to make you successful, be able to beat other people because they don't have those technologies. And I want to thank you for watching this video.